Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love every Saturday. And we're reading uh, Matthew 5. And what I want to share with you is the two main areas it looks like God is challenging us in is in character and service. Serving Him in the kingdom. All right. So we're going to start with Matthew 5. And we, are start, uh, we will start reading at verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which, which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which are before you ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost its savor wherewith shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men ye are the light of, of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see you, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Hmm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Let me stop there. You know, the thing that we don't realize is we are saved by grace, yes, which means we have unmerited favor. God has called us into the kingdom for no good of our own none but once we're in the kingdom it's as if i tell lynn lynn i'm adopting you as my daughter now we're the same age so that's kind of comical i'm adopting you as my daughter now she didn't do anything for me to adopt her did she but once she moves in my house she's got to live by my rules hmm. That's the part we don't think about. We think that the grace that we have been called into or called by because we live in the dispensation of grace means I'm okay, you're okay, everybody's okay, and that's okay. And that's not okay. So what I want to share with you is that God wants us to reflect him thank you all right in that reflection we are to channel his light now the lord had given me an, an analogy weeks ago and it popped right back in my head and that analogy is you hold up a magnifying glass and we magnify the Lord in everything we do and say, now don't we? And when you hold up that magnifying glass, the light, the sun shining through that magnifying glass, this is what happens. If you focus it correctly onto a piece of paper, that light comes in, zeroes in and pinpoints a spot on that paper and if you hold it there long enough, change will take place. Right in the center of that light beam, that paper will get hotter and hotter until it begins to burn. Well, when we channel God's light through our lives, our flesh burns and we change. Our appearance changes. Our words change. Our vocabulary changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those four, four and five letter words start falling by the wayside.
because we don't feel comfortable using them anymore. So what ends up happening is there's a change that takes place, which is called, in essence, repentance. Repentance, I have to say it over and over because a lot of people don't realize it, is not an, an apology. I'm sorry, Lord. Repentance is asking for his mercy and making an about face. You change direction. Now, saying all that to say that God is always challenging our character. One, okay, we're in his house now. He's in our house. He's in our temple. And we are his. We are his adopted children. We have been grafted in. Now, we have to live by his laws, don't we? We have to abide by his rules. It's his household. It's his kingdom. We have to abide by his rules. So you can't do what you want to do when you want to do it. Because there's no guarantee that you're going to stay in that house. I know you've heard little stories of how parents have kicked their kids out of the house. Because they wouldn't get a job. They wouldn't do what they were supposed to do. Yeah. So you don't want to lose this, this beautiful treasure God has given you. And then on top of what God has given you, you have, to, you have to exude his character. While you're exuding his character, you're also called to spread the gospel, to be ambassadors for God, to win people over into the kingdom so that they will accept Christ as their savior as well. We are to we are to take on his uniform, his behavioral patterns. He has a, how do they say it at jobs? There's a code of conduct. Jesus has a code of conduct. Let me list a few of them for you. We are to love others as we love each, ourselves. We are to love the Lord God above all. We are not to worship any other gods besides him. You hear what I'm saying? We're not to tell lies because when you love a person, you don't lie to them. We're not to steal. When you love a person, you don't take what doesn't belong to you and that belongs to someone else. There are things you don't do to people when you love them. And all of the law and the prophets are founded on love. So if you find yourself doing wrong by your buddies, by your family members, by your co-workers, something's wrong in you. And, it's, and I'll tell you right now, what you're feeling for that person you're doing wrong by is not love. So if we're going to be ambassadors by Christ, we're living in these last days. To whom, this is scripture, to whom much is given, much is required. And I'm going to tell you, you're not going to require your two-year-old child to drive you to the store or to go to the store and buy groceries. But you will require that of your 18-year-old, right? So what my question to you where are you? How old are you in the Lord? How far have you gotten into him? Is he just your little sidekick that you hang out with when you have nothing else better to do? Is he your last resort? Hmm. Does he only get to have your company when nobody else wants yours? How is your relationship with him? Because God cannot use wood and stubble, but he will use silver and gold. And in these last days, he doesn't need something that's going to catch on fire real quick. Wood and stubble will catch on fire, just like that. But not silver and gold. 
Fire purifies silver and gold. It doesn't break it down. It builds it up. It strengthens it. It purifies it. And that's what God wants to do with us. He wants his holy fire to purify the sons of Levi. He wants to purify us, y'all. Because he cannot have a contaminated servant touching people, leaving them worse than they were before they started out. He wants us to pull them into the body of Christ. He wants us to love them to God. He wants us to, to make God palatable, make God appetizing, introduce them to the, the, the loving God that longs for them. But if you're hateful, if you're bitter, if you're resentful, argumentative, and, and, and full of strife, controlling, dominating, uh, mean, spirited, resent, uh, uh, what's the word, spiteful, how can God use you to win them over to God? They have all that out there where they are now. They don't need God in their mind. If coming to God means they got to come through you. See what I mean? There are a lot of people who don't even realize they have run people away from the kingdom of God. They have run people away from God because of the way they carry themselves, because of the way they talk to people, the way they treat people, the little things they do, the little the, the little white lies and the little teeny weeny sins. But they don't realize it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And those things that you may consider insignificant, God is gagging at the stench that's coming from your mouth as you cry, Lord, Lord, because he does not want religious hypocrites. He doesn't have time for that. Time is winding up. These are the last of the last days and the rapture is imminent. It's, it's coming any, any minute now. And if you're playing tiddlywinks with your walk with the Lord, consider how many people in your family, how many people on your block, at your job, wherever you hang out, on your team. Consider how many people do not want to be bothered with God if you are the example of what they have to live with what they have to put up with. So my question to you is, do you want to be an ambassador for God? Or are you dead set on being an embarrassment to him? Hmm? What do you want to be? Are you going to be graceful? Or are you going to be grumpy? What are you going to be? Are you going to be merciful? Or are you going to be mean-spirited? What are you going to be? So you have to ask yourself, if someone came up to you acting the way you act on a daily basis, treating you the way you treat others, would you want any part of God if that's who they were trying to win you over to? Or would you say, hmm, if that's all there is to it, I might as well stay where I am. I got all that mess here. And what would you say? You know you. When nobody's looking, you know you. Are you a wonderful appetizer? Or are you a horrible deterrent? Ask yourself that question. And if you can't come up with an honest answer, if you really want to know, ask God. Amen. God bless you. And remember, God needs servants. He said in his word, the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. So we have to pray that God sends out laborers 
will you be one of those laborers or are you too busy uh, needing a bath to get out into the public because you stink too bad because your attitude stinks because your behavior stinks do you want to be one of those laborers the bible says many are called but few are chosen. And here's one more thing I want to throw out there. When I asked the Lord if he were to come right now, this is about two or three days ago, in the rapture, to call us up to the clouds to meet him in the air. What percentage of the body of Christ worldwide would make it right now? What percentage? You know what number he gave me? One, five, 15 percent. That's all. All the other people saying, Lord, Lord, all the people pastoring, preaching, singing, leading choirs, playing instruments, ushering, whatever you're doing for the body of Christ, only 15 percent. My heart got so heavy and so sad when he said that. I was like, Lord, keep examining me. Stay on my case. Don't let me slide off base. Please don't. Don't let me slide out of bounds. Please. Through my attitude. Even though people don't hear my words and don't see action, my attitude may keep me here. I don't want that. Do you 